Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you for attending my presentation. Uh, today, I'm going to talk about sequential imputation with integrated model selection, a novel approach to missing value imputation in high dimensional survey data. My name is Michael Fischer. I'm a PhD student um, at the program in Survey Methodology at the University of Michigan. Um, and first of all, I would like to thank my advisors, Brady West and Rottel, for their ongoing feedback. So what's the problem? Um, so we face incomplete survey data due to multiple reasons. So for example, we have item neuron response and unit neuron response. Uh, sometimes we fail to link um, data from different sources. Um, and there's also panel attrition um, in panel data, for example. Um, so the problem is that these uh, missing values uh, from the sources that I just told you are most likely not missing completely at random. And additionally, we have um, a high number of variables that in our data that could have um, any possible distribution. Um, so we have continuous variables, we have binaries, we have uh, variables with multiple categories. And the usual or one usual approach um, is to multiply impute uh, these missing values uh, via multiple sequential imputation. Um, which is an iterative process um, that imputes each variable that is incomplete uh, based on uh, or conditional on all other variables. Um, and this process is then um, based on the missing at random assumption, which is a less strict assumption than the missing completely at random assumption. So why is this a problem? Um, the standard procedures like uh, mice in R, for example, uh, they need a specified model for each incomplete variable. So that first leads to subjectivity in terms of uh, which method should be selected. And afterwards, uh, when we have a method, how should we specify a, a model? Um, and there is also the problem of efficiency. So we have limited resources in terms of time and labor. Also, there are um, examples in the literature that find um, the standard procedures for imputation can fail in high dimensional data settings. So this leads to my research question of how we can do missing data imputation in such high dimensional data setups um, and how we can do it in a more automated way. Um, just to give you uh, an idea of what I mean by high dimensional, um, so for example, the health and retirement study has over 6,000 variables or a panel study of in-kind dynamics, for example, has over 5,000 variables. So the proposed solution here is still doing sequential imputation. So still having the iterative process of uh, imputing each incomplete variable conditional on all other variables. However, what's new here is within the sequential imputation pr procedure, uh, we first do a more automated method selection and then also more automated model classification. Uh, the advantages are here that many different methods uh, can be used at the same time, so we don't need to pre-select. Um, and this is also a more objective procedure. So what methods am I using here? Um, based on the literature, I've selected four different procedures um, that I'm using. Uh, they all have been shown to be useful for imputing missing values. Uh, the first one are regularized generalized linear models. The second one are classification and regression trees, short card, um, the random forest, and last, the Bayesian edited regression trees, short part. So here I just want to introduce to you the sequential imputation with integrated method selection, short SIMS uh, procedure. And this procedure does for each iteration, um, first, for each method M that we just uh, saw in the previous slide. Um, first, fit a model using all the covariates. Uh, and then second, estimate uh, two different criteria. This is just two different things. So first, the first criterion um, focuses on the distribution um, of the imputed values. And the second one focuses on the conditional mean. Uh, in the third, in the second step, sorry, um, we just combine these uh, criteria to a single method criterion. Um, and third, just select the method with the minimal criterion and update the imputed values. Uh, in the last step, we just repeat the first three steps for each variable with missing values. 
um, and do that iteratively and update the missing values so that we receive one imputed data set. Um, by repeating uh, the procedure just multiple times, we um, end up with multiply imputed data sets. So here I'm introducing to you the first criterion, which is focusing on the distribution of the imputed values. Um, this procedure is adapted from Mineranko and Ragunathan 2016. Um, so first uh, we estimate the response propensity score here E hat, which is just a probability of observing the incomplete variable Y. So R here is um, the response indicator, which is one if Y is observed and zero if Y is missing. <clears throat> the second step, um, we use um, the estimate response propensity score uh, to um, estimate the conditional density for the observed values conditional on the propensity score. Um, number three, um, we do for all um, potential methods that are used for imputation, we first fit the model and second, we predict um, the sets of missing values uh, based on uh, all um, covariates X. Um, and then in the final step four, um, which is pretty similar to the second step, we um, estimate conditional densities for uh, the imputed values uh, for each method M um, conditional on the propensity score. So after estimating uh, these densities, we just compare the observed one and the potentially imputed ones. So looking at the picture in gray, uh, we just see an example of an observed distribution. Um, and on the, in yellow, we um, get a potentially imputed density from uh, Legorous linear models, for example. Uh, in blue, we get an density that comes from a card, for example. <clears throat> and the more overlap between the observed and the potentially imputed uh, density, the more plausible the imputed missing values based on uh, missing at random assumption. So here, for example, we have uh, more overlap for car than for the regularized linear model. Uh, and therefore we would uh, use card to impute um, this variable here. And instead of looking at the picture, uh, we can also do that in a more automated fashion um, here by just using a measure of similarity for densities. And uh, here I'm using the Hellinger's distance. So the second criterion is basically um, a pseudo MSE um, that is computed only on the observed values for Y. So here for a scalar YI, uh, we can uh, compute a combined measure of um, accuracy and variability. Um, here, the formula for that is um, for, for the scalar I um, and the method M, uh, we uh, draw several um, capital B values that are then used uh, to, uh, to estimate the variance. Here yi m bar uh, just represents uh, the mean of all the draws and the mean of all the draws can also be used to uh, estimate the bias. And then we just com uh, we square the bias and uh, combine it with the variance so that we um, get something like an MSE like measure. Um, averaging over all um, the SIMs for the scalars um, leads just to um, the MSE-like measure for a method M. Um, so this is just a representing of how well the conditional mean is modeled. Um, and it's also, as you can see, uh, available on uh, a scalar level. So then we could just combine the two criteria. Um, we just compute them weighted sum of the standardized uh, criteria uh, so that we receive a single method assessment criterion for each method M here, MIC M um, regarding the weighting. Um, so since HM is uh, assessing the plausibility of the imputed values under missing at random um, and the MSE star um, is assessing the essential model structure and also necessary for unbiased estimates under missing at random. 
uh, we just use three different sets of weights. Um, the first one is just focusing on, on the first criteria, and the second one on the second one, and the third is just an equally weighted mean. So there are additional features in the current implementation. The criteria that I just showed you are only for continuous variables. However, I developed and implemented also criteria that are um, useful for binary variables. Uh, there is an option for um, a variable selection that takes place before the imputation um, process is starting to potentially increase speed. And there is also an option for including the uh, response propensity score into the imputation model uh, to receive the double reverse property. So I'm right in the middle of uh, conducting a simulation study uh, that compares um, the SIMS procedure that I just introduced to you um, with mice using random forest. Um, and the assessment takes place in two different ways. Um, the first is um, accuracy of the multiple imputed data. Uh, we do that by um, fitting a regression model on uh, the multiple imputed data and then um, compare the bias, the RMSE and the confidence interval coverages um, for these better coefficients uh, that we receive. And the second one is runtime of the imputation process, because we might think that um, fitting several methods in an iterative process uh, might take quite a long time. So what we're expecting here is just a trade-off between accuracy and process time. So as I said, I'm right now in the middle of assessing the procedure. Um, I still want to like to uh, show you some basic results. Um, so here, the accuracy, for example, um, which is just the bias of the beta coefficients, we see that SIMS and MICE um, have about the, the same magnitude of uh, bias. However, for process time, um, MICE is doing the imputation job uh, much faster than SIMS, especially for um, a high number of observations here, for 5,000 observations. So that leads to my next steps. Um, which is basically increasing speed um, by first uh, tracking the runtime per method to see actually where the bottlenecks are. Um, and then also uh, simplifying hyperparameter tuning um, that is happening in the background at that takes potentially a lot of time. And then of course, also doing a simulation on high dimensional data. So that's all from my side. Uh, thank you for your attention. Um, and if you have any questions, uh, just ask me in the Q and A or uh, send me an email.